So after hearing this problem, some of you are going to think that only a math genius can solve this thing. But uh, I don't think that's the case. You don't have to be a math genius to figure this out. But let me explain the problem. So we have two trains here. They are leaving the station. So this train right here going 60 miles per hour has left the station and it's been traveling for one hour. Now this train right here going 90 miles per hour is basically uh, on a parallel track. So the question is, when is this train going to catch up to this train right here? All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna break down the steps to solve this problem in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help in math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, we have these two trains. They're leaving the same location. So this train right here going 60 miles per hour has been traveling for one hour. Then this train going 90 miles per hour is basically going on a parallel track. So again, the question is, when is this train, how long or how much time is it gonna take for this train right here to catch up to this train right here? So let's take a look at the solution steps right now. In order to solve this problem, we need to understand the relationship between distance, time, and speed. And another word for speed is called rate. So 60 miles per hour, for example, is the rate of this train or the speed or velocity of this train. But technically, this is something called a rate. So let's just think about the relationship between distance, time, and speed or rate. So 60 miles per hour. So what does this mean? Well, it means the train is going to go 60 miles per every one hour. So it's going to go 60 miles in one hour. So the relationship here is if we take our rate, our speed here, and multiply it by the time, that will give us the distance. So the formula that we need to use to solve this problem is distance is equal to rate times time. Now we have to be very aware of the units of measure involved here. Matter of fact, let's take a closer look at this rate, 60 miles per hour, so we don't get confused. So 60 miles per hour means 60 miles per is the fraction bar every one hour. So when we multiply this rate times this time, notice that our time is in hours. So this right here is our hours and our answer is going to be in miles. So you have to be very aware of the units of measure here, but 60 miles per hour, we could also write it in this manner. So 60 miles per one hour times one hour, right? So how, how much distance will this train going 60 miles per hour uh, travel in one hour? Well, the obvious answer is 60 miles, but I just want you to kind of understand the units of measure here. So 60 miles per one hour is a fractional, uh, fraction that looks like this. So right here, when we multiply fractions, we're gonna multiply the respective numerators and denominators, and we could cross cancel hours and we're left with miles. So that's why the correct answer is 60 miles. Okay, so keep that formula in mind because that really is going to be the key to solving this, uh, solving this problem. All right, so here is our lovely problem. So we have this train, it's going 60 miles per hour and it already has a one hour on this train right here going 90 miles per hour. So what we're looking for is the time it's going to take for this train to catch up to this train. So let's let a variable like t represent our answer. Okay, so how many hours is it going to take for this train to catch up to this train right here? So t is what we're looking for. So as long as you kind of keep this variable in mind and this formula, distance is equal to rate times time, well, you should start to kind of maybe see how you could possibly figure this out. So again, you don't have to be a math genius, but what do you think is going to be the key in order to solve this problem? Well, the key here is we have to kind of consider 
when are the two trains uh, going to cover the same distance? So in other words, they're leaving from the same uh, station, the same location. So this train going 60 miles per hour, it's going slower, right? But it's still covering this distance right here. This train going 90 miles per hour is going faster and eventually it's going to catch up to this train going 60 miles per hour at this spot right here. It doesn't make a difference because here the distance that the train going 60 miles per hour will be equal to the distance of the train going 90 miles per hour. So really what we want to do is figure out when the distance uh, covered by both of these trains are equal. When is the distance equal? So if we can figure this out, well, that's a big clue in order to figure out how much time it's going to take uh, for this train to catch up. So now really this problem comes down to solving an algebra word problem. And we can organize all the information in this problem using this lovely table. So remember again that distance is equal to rate times time. So the rate again is like the speed or velocity of something. So we know that uh, one of the trains is going 60 miles per hour and the other train is going 90 miles per hour. Now, the time it takes for this train going 90 miles per hour to catch up to the tra uh, slower train is T hours, right? So who or which train, excuse me, travel longer? Okay, which train has been on the track longer, if you will? Well, it's this train, right? So it's going to take T hours for this uh, faster train to catch up to the slower train. So this slower train is be going, it's been going this amount of time plus one hour because it has a one hour, a one hour, excuse me, head start. So this is really critical. So the time uh, the slower train has been traveling is T plus one. Okay, so now we're going to use some algebra to express the distance. So rate times time is equal to distance. So here, algebraically, we're going to take this 60 and multiply it, multiply it by t plus 1. And the way we're going to do that is uh, using something called the distributor property. So that's going to be 60t plus 60 times 1 right here. That is 60. So the distance covered by the slower train is 60t plus 60. And then here, rate times time of the faster train, 90 times t, is simply 90t. So what we can do is figure out when is this distance, this distance equal to this distance. So we can use a simple algebra equation to express that. And of course, if we can solve for the variable t here, we can solve the problem. Before I show you the rest of the steps to solve this problem, take a quick second and hit that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And then hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. Now, if you need additional help in math, word problems, algebra, trigonometry, geometry, basic math, make sure to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. All right, so back to our basic equation here. So we're trying to solve for t, and t is uh, the number of hours it's going to take for that faster train to catch up to that slower train. So remember, 60t plus 60, this is the distance of that slower train, then 90t, 90t is the distance traveled by the faster train. And when the, distance, the distances are equal, excuse me, that's when uh, that faster train has caught up to the slower train. So just as a reminder, you know, of what we're trying to do here, we're trying to solve for t, but we need to understand the concepts. All right, so we have 90t on the right-hand side of the equation. Now, really what you want to do is you want to move your variables to the left and your numbers to the right. So if I just kind of leave the equation here, I would have to subtract 90t from both sides of the equation. And then I would have to subtract 60 from both sides of the equation. So I can save myself a little bit of time by moving the 90t over to the left-hand side and then the 60t plus 60 on the right-hand side. So the left is equal to the right, or the right is equal to the left. So you're totally allowed to do this in algebra. It's just going to save me one step. Okay, so now I'm going to move that 60t over to the left-hand side of the equation. And how do I do that? Well, that's easy. All I have to do is subtract 60t from both sides of the equation. Remember the golden rule of algebra. 
whatever you do to one side of the equation. You have to do the exact, the exact same thing to the other side. So now we're going to add down in a column manner. So 90t minus 60t is 30t. And then over here, 60t's go away. 60t minus 60t is 0. We don't need to write that. And then 60 plus nothing is 60. Okay, so only one more step to take to uh, find our answer. So to solve this equation for t, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 30. So 30 divided by 30 is 1. So 1t one is the same thing as t. And 60 divided by 30 is 2. So the correct answer here is 2. And remember, the units of measure here is in hours. So it's going to take uh, that faster train two hours to catch up to the slower train. All right. Now, if you got this right, well, I have to give you a lovely happy face and A plus a 100%. Matter of fact, if you were in my math class, I would just say take the rest of the year off. I'm not sure how uh, you're getting so good in math. You're probably watching that guy on YouTube. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.